Yeah, so basically, you know, this concept comes more from electrostatics, but it's ad- adapted in gravitation. So what happens is that if you have, for example, in electrostatics, you have a closed shell, okay, which is having uniform charge density, sigma on the surface, okay, or total charge Q and radius R. Or sigma equal to Q upon 4 pi R square. So, kya hai? at the surface, okay, the field is how much? The field is Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught R square. So, you can write it as sigma upon epsilon naught. Okay. Now, if you just imagine that small differential element on the surface, now of area DA. So, ye jo field hai, this field is the net field because which is the field because of that small area DA plus the field because of the remaining part of the sphere. So, it is the shell minus that small area DA. Following Arman? Yes, sir. So, abhi ke ye jo small area DA hai, Isko agar mein separately consider karo, na? so it's a very small area DA, but it's far because it's very small, so it's like a lamina of charge density sigma. Yes. Okay. So this kind of a lamina creates what kind of a field on either side? It creates equal field of let's say E prime, and that E prime is how much? Sigma by two epsilon naught by Gauss's law. Yes. Infinite plane type ka. So even though it's a very small area, but we are going to an even smaller distance near it. Okay, so it's acting like an infinite plane. So this is equal to this. Understood? Na? Yes. So that is why at a point inside, kya hota hai? Iska jo E prime hai, or external sphere ke minus DA ka jo outside wala field hai, wo dono cancel kar jate hai. Whereas at a point just outside, they add. What na? So, this quantity, if it has a magnitude, let's say E double prime. So, at a point just inside, E double prime and E prime are in opposite direction. So, they cancel each other. At a point just outside, they add to each other. So, that's why. Okay. So, because this quantity has a magnitude of sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. Sorry, sigma upon epsilon naught. And these two quantities add. Just outside. Whereas just inside kya hoga, ye zero hoga and minus e double prime. Okay. So in comparing these two equations, you can see that e double prime should be sigma upon two epsilon. Okay. So that is two upon eight pi epsilon naught r square. So in the case of gravitation, just replace q with m and one by four pi epsilon naught with g. So, it will become G up, uh, GM upon 2 R square. Okay, I'm on here. Uh, next, we'll move on to uh, Shall we do this uh, electromagnetic induction question? Sir, how much is it? Second 24. 24 ka C, yes. Uh, so, kya karna hai mujhe isme? Find the EMF induced at 22 seconds. Yes. Iska okay. speed kya diya hua hai mujhe? 1 centimeter per second. The speed is 1 centimeter per second. This example. And it is just about starting to enter, no? At t yes. equal to 0. Huh. So, 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. t equal to 0 yaan pa hai. It's just starting to enter this region. And this region is 20 centimeters in width. Okay. So, at 22 seconds, ye puchha na, 22 seconds, haan. Kao, iska displacement kitna ka 22 centimeters? So, 22 centimeters means this point has gone 20 plus 2. So, it has come somewhere here. 
यहाँ कहीं पे आ गया है ना तो बाहर आ रहा है सो फ्लक्स इज डिक्रीजिंग ना बेटा दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम क्या हो रहा है ये इस ये वाले सेक्शन में V cross B ऐसा है सो दिस एक्टिंग लाइक अ बैटरी लाइक दिस बट दिस सेक्शन इज आउटसाइड सो देर इज नो बैटरी understand so this emf induced is blv and there will be a clockwise current and as you can see the flux no v cross v ha huh, should be like this so this is creating something going into the plane correct because the flux going into the plane is decreasing clockwise ka wo logic hai understood na क्या होगा देखो जीरो टू फाइव सेकेंड उल्टा होगा बिकॉज इट गोइंग इन टू सो इन टू द्लेन इज इंक्रीजिंग सो इट क्रिएट एंटी क्लॉक वाइज बट देन फ्रॉम फाइव टू ट्वेंटी सेकेंड दे वोट बी एनी नेट इंड्यूस टी एम एफ ना एंड देन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव सेकेंड दिस इज वॉट इज है आउटसाइड ओके सो दिस इज क्लियर बेटा Yes. Okay. Let's let's move on to the next question. That thirteenth one you sent. Uh, sir, we see my twenty-five B. Twenty-five. Find the total heat produced in the loop in the previous question during the interval zero to thirty seconds. Okay. Ah, uh, so total heat कैसे निकालते देखो? So zero to five seconds इसमें क्या हो रहा है? There's a constant EMF. Equal to zero to five seconds. EMF is BLV, so current is BLV by R. So rate of heat production. Ah, uh, I square R. Ah, I square R. So this will so there will be heat produced during that zero to five seconds, which will be this uh, BLV whole square divided by R. You know where R is the net resistance. Then five to twenty seconds, there won't be any heat produced. Then twenty to twenty-five. Ah, so वापस twenty to twenty-five में सेम होगा. Then twenty to twenty-five seconds में वापस से there will be some heat produced, which will be the same. Yeah. Then I'll just. Okay. So this is done, Mr. Yes. Next, we have that. Thirteen question of the coil. So you have a closed coil of number of turns hundred. Okay. Magnetic field you have given. Okay. So what is happening? The coil is something like this. Only it has hundred turns, and you are rotating it about a diameter like this. And the diameter is perpendicular to the field, so let's say the field is like this. So the omega is given to us. Omega is three hundred revolutions per second. So three hundred into two pi. Sorry, per minute. So two pi by sixty in radians per second. What right now? Area of the coil is also given to us. Okay. It is twenty-five centimeter square, and resistance is given to us four ohms. So average EMF induced. So, how is it? This is that sinusoidal EMF induced. So average will be zero. Oh no! You have to find the average in half a turn from a position where the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, so you have to start from a position where the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it means the area of the coil is perpendicular. So it's this, this only, right? Yes. So यहाँ से half turn में कितना होगा? So you just calculate this thing now. The flux as a function of time is n times area into magnetic field into cos omega t so emf induced is e not sin omega t where e not is how much it is 
n times e into b into omega. Why does one look clear? Yes. Average EMF from zero to t by two, where t is two pi by omega. Capital T is two pi by omega. That thing will become how much? E naught sine omega t. dt को इंटीग्रेट कर दो फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी बाई टू और डिवाइड कर दो फ्रॉम बाई टी बाई टू सरवान दिस क्लियर हाउ यू डू दिस ओके सिमिलरली यू हैव टू फाइंड द एवरेज ईएमएफ इन अ फुल टर्न वो तो जीरो हो जाएगा बिकॉज साइन ओमेगा टी का एरिया इन वन फुल टर्न कितना होता है जीरो हो जाता है But net charge displaced in A, so that will be uh, average EMF. Co divide kar do by resistance, so that's average current, and multiply with time. Time. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Next question. We will do this twenty ninth one. नहीं सो वो आ गया था अच्छा वो आ गया ओके जस्ट अ मिनट Okay, so this one you have got twenty ninth. Uh, so I think the EMI doubts are done, right? The ones you have sent, no. Okay. Okay. Twenty second. Uh, what is that, sir? Who? Uh, no. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm just first sharing the question. Okay, so this question, what is happening? You have a current generator which sends a constant current through the circuit. Okay, and the wire CD is fixed, and AB is made to slide on the smooth thick rails with a constant velocity V. Each of the wires has a resistance R. Find the current through the wire CD. Okay, so what do we have to do, Arman? We have to make an equivalent circuit diagram. So we have to make an equivalent circuit diagram where what is happening in that is that. कांस्टेंट करंट जनरेटर क्या करता है इट मेंटेन्स अ कांस्टेंट करंट इन दैट वायर ओके सो वी हैव अ करंट जनरेटर आईजी इट विल मेंटेन अ कांस्टेंट करंट आई इररिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ ईएमएफ एंड ऑल दैट इन दैट सेक्शन ऑफ द वायर ओके वेयर इज द सेक्शन सीडी इज अ फिक्स्ड वायर सो इट विल जस्ट एक्ट लाइक अ रेजिस्टेंस आर ओके एंड the section eb is a moving wire which has resistance as well as induced emf so kaisa move kar raha hai aisa move kar raha hai velocity v inside a field like this so v cross b is pointing upwards so it will be like this kind of a cell okay so we are making it move at a constant velocity so it will maintain a constant emf of b and ठीक है सर्किट डायग्राम इज क्लियर 
yes okay so now you have to just basically understand the if this current is i1 let's say okay this splits into i and i minus i1 and just make this no okay so for this loop you have to just write the equation so e minus i1 r okay minus i minus i1 r is equal to 0 right so from this you will get i1 Ah. And then you know the wire, current in each wire. In this wire, it is I one, and in this wire, it is I minus I one. Oh, sorry, this is I one minus I one minus I one minus I one. Okay, so just solve this equation. There is only one unknown in this. Solve this equation for I one, and that's it. Then the currents are. I one in the wire E B and I one minus I in the wire C D. Okay. Were we done clear? Yes. What about this uh, next question number six, right? Yes. The two loops one. How is the directions? How is it? so two loops in the figures have planes parallel to each other as viewed from a towards b okay so what is happening in this question is that you have two loops like this with the planes parallel to each other so there is as viewed from a towards b there is an anti clockwise current in a so matlab that means in this diagram this current is coming out of the plane over here and going in over here that's why when we move from this side the current in a will appear to be anti clockwise no sir it will appear to be anti clockwise no so the current is not like this the current is Going in over here and coming out over here. Because I'm on this side, see, 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 from A towards B. So I'm viewing from this side, and A's current appears to be what? It appears to be anti-clockwise. So it should be like this. Going in over here and coming out from that side. Okay, Arman, this is clear. The diagram. Yes. Give the direction of okay. give the direction of current in loop B. State whether the loops attract or repel each other. Yeah, I think there's something wrong in the line of the question because what about the current in loop B? Okay, unless there is, अच्छा अच्छा, okay. When the current is okay, so क्या हो रहा है देखो? E कैसा magnetic field create कर रहा है बेटा यहाँ पे? A to B जाएगा मतलब. He's creating a magnetic field, no, which is going, which is coming out from this side. So it's a magnetic field which is like this. This type of magnetic field is created. The direction ulta ni raiga sir. But when you are viewing from this side, it's anti-clockwise, no? So it's like this. That if you have your x, so this wala diagram kon se plane mein hai? Y-z plane mein. Ah. Okay. So that. Direction of the current being anti-clockwise on this side means that it's along minus I cap, no? The field. What is clear? So, अभी देखो, E में अगर current increase हो रहा है, तो B में कैसा current induce होगा? Clockwise. 
सो दैट टाइम वॉट शुड हैपन दे शुड सो इसमें अगर क्लॉक वाइज करेंट है और इसमें एंटी क्लॉक वाइज करेंट है वॉट कैंड ऑफ They should repel. Yes. Hmm. You can understand that from Lenz's law also. That A may current increase or as so it's increasing the flux to B, you know. So how the induced quantity should be? They should be in such a way that it opposes the change. So how will the flux in B do the opposite of increasing by going away? Yes. ठीक है and whereas you know the current decrease ho raha hai to kya hona chahiye attract hona chahiye that is a direct lens law of way of understanding it yeah very important otherwise see another way you can understand it is see in the first diagram i have considered that current is increasing so b mein kaisa current hona chahiye flux is increasing so it should create a clockwise current so it should be like this in b okay now see in the loop b the magnetic field near the edges it has what kind of direction radially inwards it has a component radially inwards so this is creating b cross b in which sort of direction uh, sorry ideal cross b in which sort of direction repulsion यहाँ पे देखो आइडियल टेंजेंशियल है ऐसा और बी ऐसा है सो आइडियल क्रॉस बी कैसा है ऐसा है इन टू द प्लेन सो इन टू द प्लेन हियर विल बी अ फोर्स लाइक दिस वर्ड वेर एज अगर ये करंट डिक्रीज हो रहा था होता है ए में सो बी का करंट एंटी क्लॉक हो जाता सो द फोर्स वेक्टर्स वुड बी कमिंग आउट ऑफ द प्लेन सो इट वुड बी अट्रैक्शन ओके सो सेवेंथ क्वेश्चन आल्सो यू कैन डू बाय द सेम मेथड अरमन गिव द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द इंग्लिश करंट इन द सर्किट अच्छा ओके सो डिफरेंट थिंग इन द राइट हैंड फिगर व्हेन द रेजिस्टेंस इन द ओके so in in the next question also it's a very similar thing but it's like see you have one circuit which is in a loop like this okay i'm just making a rough diagram usme emf hai and ye resistance hai and another circuit which is in a loop like this so what kind of magnetic field this is creating this creating magnetic field here sorry current is like this so this is a what type of current clockwise so it's creating a magnetic field going in here if it's going in here it's coming out from this side तो अभी देखो इसमें अगर मैं रियोस्टैट का रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीज कर रहा हूं तो ये करंट डिक्रीज हो रहा है सो दिस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज डिक्रीजिंग सो हियर इंक्रीज होगा दैट्स कमिंग आउट ऑफ दैट दिस थिंग इज डिक्रीजिंग नी इफ दिस आई इज इंक्रीजिंग देन दिस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज आल्सो इंक्रीजिंग इफ दिस आई इज डिक्रीजिंग देन दिस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज आल्सो डिक्रीजिंग अंडरस्टूड नाउ यस ओके बिकॉज़ सी दिस लूप it acts like a magnetic dipole coming out of the plane na so magnetic dipole like this is come mu as i what kind of magnetic field it creates it creates like this na this type of magnetic field na so if any other loop is over here what kind of magnetic field it's experiencing going into the plane here whereas yahan pe is coming out of the plane yes okay so this is the concept Okay, Arman. Okay. Now, just give me a minute. I'll see what the others are yes. doing also. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Dhruv and Kritika, have you sent me any questions? Because I have not received anything from you guys yet. Sir, I have mailed you. पहले भेज दिया था. Uh, can you just resend me the questions, Kritika? Okay. Whatever. I have mailed you. You mailed me just now, though. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Just give me a minute. I'll see your questions. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, Arman, we'll do this next question, then we'll move to some of those questions. Okay. It's 35th one, right? Do you have a doubt? 35 and D. Okay. So, 35th, what is happening? We have a LR circuit with the EMF connected at time t equal to 0. So we have this kind of circuit. So we have a series LR circuit. Now the switch S is closed at t equal to 0. So we have to find the magnetic energy stored in the inductor at time t. So find energy stored in the inductor at time t equal to t. So this make your formula use karenge Arman. We'll use the formula energy stored in the inductor is half Li square. Correct. And instantaneous current is make kaisa hota hai. It is E by R into 1 minus E raised power minus R T by T. Right. Just substitute this here. So this is the instantaneous current here. So substitute that. Okay. All right, just here. Yes. Similarly, 39th question you asked, it is a direct question of mutual inductance of solenoids. So mutual mm. inductance of solenoids, kya hota hai? see, if you have two solenoids, which are placed coaxially, one is like this, it has number of turns per unit length N1, total length L1, and area of each turn is A1, and you have coaxially placed another one, which is having number of turns per unit length N2 area A2 okay, total length L2 but also the overlap length it could also be inside only till a partial point so the overlap length is equal to L suppose okay. then how do we find the coefficient of mutual inductance if you send current I1 in one of the loops, then the flux in the second loop should be coefficient of mutual inductance into I1. That is the concept? Yes. Good. Now suppose you send current in the outer loop, then the magnetic field will be mu naught N1I, where I is the current you are sending. So the flux through the second loop will be equal to area of each turn in the second loop. Okay. Which is A2 multiplied with the magnetic field mu naught n one i multiplied with the number of turns of the second loop which is overlapping so that will be number of turns per unit length into the overlap length okay. so as you can see the coefficient of mutual inductance becomes what it becomes mu naught n one n two into overlap length into overlap area yeah overlap area a two q a because a two is smaller than a one if A1 had been smaller than A2, then it would have been this. Okay, so this is the overlap length. And this is the overlap area. Mutual uh, induct mutual mutual is under root L1, L2 be like that, no? inductance of yes, because individual inductance of L1 you know, is how much? Mu naught N1. Okay into total length so but that is when the area is similar you getting my point sure. when a1 okay. when the overlap length is also the common length okay okay so sir, hmm. sir usme jo uh, l hai overlap length hai wo either l1 or l2 dono mein se koi ek ho sakta hai na can be if it is that way that one loop is completely inside the other. But if partially here, so it is then only the overlap length. So partially means okay, okay. One loop is like this. And the other loop is like this. 
only one fraction of the area with uh, sorry area uh, fraction of the length which is common okay सर इसमें अगर कोई एंगल पे है अगर ब्लू वाले जो आपने बनाया है तो ज्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हो जाएगा ये अच्छा बिकॉज़ देन देयर वी आल्सो द प्लस वी हैव टू टेक द कंपोनेंट ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड व्हिच इज परपेंडिकुलर टू द एरिया ये cos थीटा का फैक्टर आ जाएगा अच्छा ठीक है ना बिकॉज़ दोनों के एक्सिस अगर थीटा वाले पे तो cos थीटा आ जाएगा Yes. Okay, Arman. Now I will just uh, turn to some questions from Blue also, and I'll come back to the questions from you. Okay. So I'll share the questions that Blue has sent. Just give me a moment, okay? Sir, I have sent you on WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. I'll come to your questions also later. Okay, so I am now sharing uh, one of the questions. Okay, so just go through this question. All of you. you can see this question, right, on the screen. Okay, so we'll discuss this question next. Just go through it first. Okay, so see what's happening here. You have a uniform sphere of radius r. It has a spherical cavity of radius r by two, and mass of the sphere of the cavity with the cavity is m. Okay, sphere is rolling without sliding on a rough horizontal floor. When the center of gravity is at the lowest position. so the diagram appears to be opposite to what the uh, this thing is saying question is saying because center of gravity jab lowest position pe hai to cavity to upar hona chahiye so when the center of gravity is at the lowest position the center of the sphere has a horizontal velocity v okay dhruv bhai are you there online yes sir yes sir Ah, Dhruv, I think there is a difference between what the limit of the question is saying and what the diagram is showing. Because it means when the center of gravity is at the lowest position, the speed is v. But the center of the cavity, not gravity. So center of gravity is the lowest position. Pay the cavity to upper one is, you know. Sir, center of gravity. Cavity. cavity cavity not gravity acha acha center of the cavity remains oh okay this one when the center of the cavity is at the lowest position this okay kinetic energy we have to find out the velocity of the center of mass of the sphere okay all these things we have to find out the maximum value of b which allows the sphere to roll without bouncing <coughs> okay Go through the question. Okay. Okay. 
Find that distance d. We can do like this. M into d plus now see m is the mass of the actual sphere, so it is density into four by three pi r cube minus r by two ka cube. Whereas the mass that you remove from here, let's say that is some m prime. So that m prime is how much? It is rho into four by three pi r by two ka cube. So you can see m upon m prime is equal to seven so because this will be one minus one by eight and this one by eight. Okay, so. So this will be m prime into minus r by two should be zero. So d will become m prime by m into r by two. So it will become r by fourteen. So you substitute that over here, and you will get the velocity of the center, center of mass, v c. Be r plus r by fourteen into omega, which is d by r. So that will become fifteen by fourteen. Okay. okay so, Dhruv, this part is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Next, we have to find the kinetic energy of the sphere at the given moment. So, for that, we'll have to use this relation. So, I P is nikalenge moment of inertia about the point P. So, we will have to use uh, okay this thing again. Uh, I P ke liye we can calculate moment of inertia about P is moment of inertia for a full sphere about P. Minus moment of inertia for the cavity part about the point. Okay, so full sphere would have a mass of eight by seven m because m is the mass of the given thing. M is the mass of the full sphere minus the mass of the cavity. Okay, so that's why this will be eight by seven. So eight by seven into 
for any sphere about one point on the circumference, the moment of inertia is what? 2 by 5 plus 1. So 7 by 5 into its mass into r square. So here, this into 7 by 5. into r square minus cavity ka mass m by 7 tha aur uska radius r by 2 tha okay so this will become we can take uh, m r square by 5 common okay so we will have heat from here minus yahan se kitna jayega 1 by 4 so this will be the moment of inertia and from this you can find the kinetic energy so kinetic energy is half i now the other thing is the, the center of mass is over here So the center of mass is experiencing a centrifugal force because its path is like this. So that centrifugal force should not become equal to its weight. So for normal reaction to be greater than zero, or to be equal to zero is also fine. Okay. Your mg should be greater than or equal to centrifugal force. Okay. So how we calculate the centrifugal force on the center of mass right now? So for that we have to understand that the center of mass has A VC which we calculated okay. and it has an acceleration in this direction of how much? Omega square into R by 7 because your distance that is omega square d as a So that means that it has an instantaneous radius of the radius. That E is only the centripetal expression. It's only the centripetal expression. So you substitute that over here in centrifugal force factor. Only you will have to replace uh, just a minute. Let, let me just think about this part. Ah, it's fine. So see what what one way of understanding this is that. Yes. What is happening from a geometrical point of view? We are in the frame of the point O. So we are traveling with the speed b. This is equal to r omega. Then in our frame, this point is traveling. So in our frame now, this point O will be stationary. But this point C would be traveling with the relative velocity. 
which would be equal to omega into d. Okay. Now, at this particular moment, the tangential acceleration of the point O would be zero. So this is an inertial frame. So this particle has a centripetal acceleration with respect to us. which is omega square d. Okay. So it is experiencing centrifugal force which is m omega square d. Now this will be the same centrifugal force in inertial ground frame. Why it will be the same with respect to the ground frame? Because at the given moment, this point O is an inertial frame. It's what happens in instant pe, point O is a linear velocity. It is minimum hai, because the gravitational potential energy is maximum. Hai. Okay, so that means V has reached its minimum value. So dV by dt is zero. Okay, at this particular instant, dV by dt is zero. So that is why the point O is becoming an inertial frame for us. Because it does not have any tangential acceleration. Okay. So we can use this. So now the condition for normal reaction to be there, we just substitute this in the above part. Okay. So for it to not lose contact, we should have this. Mg should be greater than or just about equal to centrifugal force. So Mg should be greater than equal to m omega square d where d is r by 7 and omega is equal to d by r okay is this clear beta yes okay okay i'm moving on to another question now Just a moment. Yeah, so this is question. Just go through it, people. We'll discuss. Okay, so mass of the fan is given to us. Okay, area that the rotating blade sweep is given to us. So that means basically the area of that circle where r is the radius of the fan blades. So that pi r square is two meter square. Find the average speed imparted to the air vertically downwards. If the tension in the light rod connecting the fan with the ceiling is this much. Okay, density of air is given to us and G is given to us. Okay, so think what concept we'll apply here. One is that we can apply, obviously we'll see the free body diagram of the fan. So it's got weight 15 G, but uspe tension because of the rod is only 11.8 uh, G. So the difference of the two is the force that the air, which is being pushed downwards, the reaction force that is supplying in the upward direction. So reaction force is 15 minus 11.8 or 3.2 kilogram force or 3.8 G. So in this case, it is 38 Newtons. Sorry, 32 Newtons. Is the reaction force that the air being pushed downwards is applying. Okay, that means the force that the fan blades is applying on the air downwards 
is how much? It is 32 newtons. So from that force, how we will calculate the downward velocity? Okay. So the reminder you to you here is think in terms of fluid mechanics. Okay. Think if the air is being pushed comparatively gently, so it is forming a streamline, okay, like a tube of flow downwards. So how we calculate reaction force in in uh, fluid mechanics in in efflux concept? Just apply that one. All of you try this question by that method, you will get the answer. Sir, thirty two kaise aaya tha? What the answer group? Yes, sir. It should be rho a v square, no? Rho a v square. That's correct. So you can skip this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can skip this. So see, this is the fan's blades that are going like this round in a circle. So they are pushing air downwards with some speed v. So at an instant, if we consider a dm mass, which is gaining a speed v, this change in momentum is dm v. That is an impulse on that mass. So the force is rate of impulse or rate of change of momentum. So dm by dt into v. So if the whole section is of area E, so dm by dt is nothing but density into volume rate of flow. And volume rate of flow in fluid mechanics is area into velocity. So the force becomes rho a v. Very simple. Like a tube of flow like this. So whatever is pushing this fluid in over here, that is applying a force like this. And this is applying an equal and opposite reaction force. So this should be equal to your uh, this thing, mg minus tension, tension in the cable which is attaching the fan. Okay, so that's this question. Okay, so next uh, I'll pick up a couple of questions from Kritika's set, and then I'll come back to other questions. So just give me a moment here.
Okay, so let me start with this question. So what is happening here is that there's a block with a spring attached to it. Spring's natural length is 10L and initially it is L above. Okay, and it's released from this position. Okay, so this is what the data of the question is showing. So first go through the data. So note down the spring constant given to you and the natural length of the spring. Spring constant is like this. And it is just a moment. Let me also note down the data of the question. The spring constant is k equal to 4 mg by L. And the natural length of the spring is 10 L. And the lower end is at a height of L. Okay. And it is released from this position. Sir, I applied the energy equation and I was not Okay, okay, we'll work it out. Okay. So, we have L height se release kar liya. So, its initial velocity is zero. Hai. So, what all we have to find? We have to find the maximum speed that achieved by the block. And we have to find till the block reaches its lowest position for the first time, the time duration. So, we have to find, so this is T equal to zero. So, we have to find the time to reach lowest position. Okay. So, this is a good question, uh, Arman and uh, Dhruv, you can also try out. Okay. So, understood the question now, all of you? Hope the question is clear to all of you. So, just try this out now. Don't worry about the options. Okay, just the important thing is, along with this, the other data which is given is the spring constant, which is given to us is 4 mg by k. Okay, the spring constant is 4 mg by k. So just use that data to try this question out. So, maximum speed ke liye kya karna padega? What is the first thing we need to do? Sir, energy equation. Yeah, but for energy equation, you have to do something else. Huh? You have to see at which point of time you are calculating the energy. So, initial and final. Mm -hmm. Initial and final time. Any energy may time can use that. We use displacement now. So we need to understand that what is the displacement of the block at the instant when its speed is maximum. You understanding? Yes. Sir, so the displacement of the block will be the uh, total height 11L minus the uh, maximum compression of the spring. No, that is where you are wrong. Maximum compression of the spring is speed 0. Speed maximum is 0. Okay. Maximum compression is not position. Speed is 0. Okay. Now, what is the extent when the speed is maximum? That is the main thing in this question to understand. When is the speed minute maximum? When the acceleration is zero? Yes. So that is the equilibrium position, no? Okay. okay. So what you have to do first is calculate the equilibrium position. So first thing here is, from this initial position, you have to find this state when V is maximum. So at the moment when V is maximum, acceleration should be zero. Because uske pehle tak kya ho hai? acceleration niche ke taraf hona chahi. Aur uske baad mein kya hoga? acceleration upar ke taraf hona chahi. So once you have crossed this point, So 
का मैक्सिमम कंप्रेशन का टाइम है वेलोसिटी जीरो होता है या बेटा तो ऑसिलेटिंग ना तो लोएस्ट पोजीशन पे तो सी व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट लेट्स दिस इज व्हेन इट फर्स्ट हिट्स द पोल सो इट हैज सम स्पीड v1 व्हिच इज रूट टू v एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इसका एक्सेलरेशन कितना है g है बिकॉज़ स्प्रिंग में एक्सटेंशन जीरो है x इज जीरो Now compare this with another motion. When it has come down by x, up here we have the spring is compressed by x. No? So its acceleration has become less than g because, but okay. the speed more. अभी तक speed इससे ज़्यादा है, but it comes to a position here. Where its acceleration becomes zero for the moment. Okay. Okay, sir. Good. So let's say this is x naught. So this is when your v is maximum. Because this the next instant, what will happen? So acceleration will be directly negative. Acceleration is like this. Because your kx will become greater than mg. Okay. So now v start decreasing. So this is less than v max again, and finally it reaches some position where momentarily your v becomes zero. So that is when your x is maximum. So first part is to find v maximum. So we are interested in this instant here. We are interested in this, which we can compare to this. Okay, so you can see here v is equal to v max. At the instant when acceleration is zero, so acceleration is zero means e x naught let's say is mg, where x naught is a compression at the equilibrium position. Because it's the equilibrium position, so x naught is mg by t. So now compare these two diagrams, this one and this one. The x equal to zero to x equal to so x equal to zero to x equal to x naught. Change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy plus change in spring's potential energy should be zero. So change in kinetic energy is now it is half m v max square minus half m. Root two GL का होल, it has fallen to a height L, increase है, okay? Plus mg plus half to x naught square is equal to zero. इसमें x naught कितना substitute करना है mg और mg by k. And k was how much? K was four mg by l. So x naught, which is l by four. This is number. So you will get your Vmax from this. Okay. And it's better. Okay. And similarly, the next thing you will do is also apply work energy from the initial instant to the maximum compression. So maximum compression ke case mein kya hoga? Your V is zero. So for the next part, for calculating maximum compression, you apply work energy theorem. Between this instant and this instant. Okay. Okay. So zero minus half m v one square, where v one is root two g m. There is a change in kinetic energy. Okay. Minus m g x maximum. There is a change in gravitational potential energy. Plus half k x maximum square to be z. इसको भी सॉल्व करना पड़ेगा आपको एक्स मैक्सिमम क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन होगा सो जो पॉजिटिव रूट होगा वो आपका आंसर हो जाएगा इसे मेथड क्लियर देते हैं ना यस सर मेथड क्लियर तो तब हाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द टाइम पीरियड 
over it. Time is that. So that was a very interesting thing. So think and tell how we we'll get the time. देखो initially क्या हो रहा है जहाँ से मैंने drop किया है वहाँ से L का जो displacement हो रहा है वो free fall में हो रहा है। क्या सर? Initially जहाँ से drop किया है before the spring comes in contact contact with the ground. और different end is free fall ना? हाँ। तो वो time कितना होगा? बेटा जैसे स्प्रिंग ग्राउंड के कांटेक्ट में आता है उसका मोशन चेंज हो जाता है ना इट इज नॉट फ्री फॉल एनी मोर व्हाट टाइप ऑफ मोशन इट इज इट्स अ वर्टिकल ऑसिलेशन वर्टिकल स्प्रिंग यस सर तो दैट टाइम इज पार्ट ऑफ एन एसएच यस सर इट इज अ फुल एसएच नहीं इट इज फ्रॉम वन सेक्शन ऑफ एन एसएच टू अनदर सेक्शन ऑफ द एसएच ओके सर इट इज गिवन अ बेटर फाइंड द इक्वेशन ऑफ एसएच पोजिशन n by 4 ka compression and we'll find out the maximum compression also on that you know the amplitude yes sir okay and initial position kahan pe equilibrium se l by 4 upar hai so it is like you know the initial position of the shr and the second position you are calculating the time is when it's gone to the amplitude okay sir so sir so the amplitude will be uh, the equilibrium position minus the uh, the final position no 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 because yahan pe dekho higher position pe speed zero nahi hai to wo extreme position nahi hai okay understanding kaun sa position extreme hai lowest wala position so maximum compression minus x not which is your l by 4 that is your amplitude ओके ऐसे जब जब स्टार्ट हो रहा है ना वो एम्पलीट्यूड से स्टार्ट ही हो रहा है बिकॉज़ द ब्लॉक इज इन इनिशियल स्पीड ट्राई आउट द सेकंड पार्ट ऑल ऑफ आई विल एक्सप्लेन आई विल एक्सप्लेन द वर्किंग पहले ये मैक्सिमम कंप्रेशन निकालो उस इक्वेशन
x max will be here n x max is coming out to be n correct theek hai so abhi dekho your equilibrium position was how much l by 4 yes sir when b was maximum and your x max position was l okay. this is when b is zero this is when b is maximum so mera amplitude kitna ho jayega itna ho jayega so okay amplitude is l minus l by 4 So three L by two. Okay. So now see what is happening. If you take your equilibrium position as y equal to zero, and this as your positive y-axis. Okay. So my initial value of y was where at L by four above. Okay. And y is equal to three L by four. That is amplitude into sine omega t plus phi, okay. where omega is square root of t by n. ठीक है बेटा, this is clear now. Yes, sir. Now phase constant कैसे निकालेंगे? So at t equal to zero. let us say the block comes in contact or the spring comes in contact with the ground
सो क्या हो रहा है इट इज सो वाई इज हाउ मच इट इज एल बाई फोर एंड इट्स स्पीड इज इन बिच डायरेक्शन डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो इट्स नेगेटिव सो योर साइन फाइव should be equal to 1 by 3 and your cos phi should be negative so it's in the second quadrant so matlab you can just think in terms of graph of shn so kaisa ho raha it is starting from a positive value but with a negative slope your y as a function of time is like this yes sir okay so this is L by four means it is how much? One fourth of amplitude. What? Right? Yeah. Because amplitude was no, so it's one third of amplitude. The amplitude was L by amplitude. Can I tell? Three by four. So it is one third of the amplitude. So e by three से minus e कितना time लेता है? That is what we have to calculate. Okay. So if you look at a regular SHM graph, so the shortcut way of understanding this is like this. Somewhere here we have. E by three, and here we have minus e. So, ये time t one, see ये time t two. You have to calculate t two minus t one this time. Understanding? So, you can do this by phase method. So, if you are following, the total time period capital T is. So, t two is very simple. T two is Three fourths of that time period, okay. but T one will be how much? It will be this sine inverse one by three in second quadrant. Okay. Okay. So omega T one should be pi minus sine inverse one by three. Okay, so T one should be one by omega. Into pi minus sine inverse one by three. So pi by omega is actually t by two. Yeah. So this is t by two minus one by omega sine inverse one by three. So ये मेरा t one आ गया. So अभी मेरा वो delta t part है when the spring is engaged. That is t two minus t one. So that is three t by four minus this. So that will give me three t by four minus t by two will give me t by four and minus this will plus हो जाएगा plus one by omega sine inverse one by three. The omega is from that S H M square root of k by. N. So my total time from initial to lowest point will become what the free fall time, which was square root of two l by g. Plus this time of the oscillation, that will become the time then, from initial to lowest position. Sir, जब वो जब वो maximum compression के बाद जब वो वापस ऊपर जाता है, then वापस equilibrium को cross करता है, तो वो जहाँ पे उसने starting से शुरू किया था, मतलब 10l के height से शुरू किया था, वो वहाँ पे वापस जाएगा। वहाँ पे जाके फिर वो jump कर जाएगा ground से। Okay. You understand? It will come back with the same speed, so it is like an in, uh, it is like an elastic collision. Okay. So it will have a separation velocity which is again the same. So, मतलब वो पूरे ऐसे सम में वो 10 l तक जाएगा। हाँ, वापस ऊपर वही वही position तक जाएगा जहाँ पे start किया था। So there is no loss of energy happening, ना? Okay. So in this we are calculating the time to go from initial position to lowest position. फिर लोएस्ट से वापस जब स्टार्ट होगा ऊपर जाना इट विल रीच द हाईएस्ट पोजीशन इन दैट बैक दैट मच टाइम ओनली सर कैन यू स्क्रॉल अप इफ डाउट है या 
सर वो बायोनॉट से मतलब एल बाय पर कैसा है सर क्योंकि हम लोग ने इक्विलिब्रियम पे बायो को जीरो लिया था हां वो एसएचएम पैरामीटर है ना बेटा सो एसएचएम का मीन पोजीशन कहां पे होता है इक्विलिब्रियम पे प्लस ओके तो इक्विलिब्रियम पे स्प्रिंग का कंप्रेशन कितना है एल बाय 4 और इनिशियली स्प्रिंग कहां से स्टार्ट हो रहा है नेचुरल लेंथ सो इनिशियल पोजीशन इक्विलिब्रियम से कहां है एल बाय 4 ऊपर हां ओके 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 सो दैट इज दिस Okay, so hope this question is clear to all of you. Yes. Okay. Arman and uh, Dhruv, it is clear, I hope. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I had sent you two more questions only okay. by mail. Okay, I will check it. Okay. So next, uh, coming to another question. Just give me a moment, people. Okay, now I'll quickly discuss a couple of more questions in Kritika's set, and then come back to. arman and dhruv said okay. so one question is uh, pretty direct so this question is like this that it says in a white in a young's double slit experiment okay the slits are arranged such that that besides the central bright fringe Or central maxima we can just say. Okay. Only one bright fringe. Okay. Is open. Okay. Neither side. the screen is infinitely large okay. then the separation and light is of wavelength lambda so then what is the value of small d the distance between the slits just try this out people Pretty straightforward question. Sir, two two lamps. Yeah, tell me what. Sir, uh, it will be uh, two lamp na. Yes, correct. Okay, because see what is happening is that. Sir, it is multiple corruption. At the center position. एक्चुअली वो डी लैम्डा से और थ्री लैम्डा से छोटा होगा हाँ सो एज यू गो टू इंफिनिटी व्हाट इज योर पार्ट डिफरेंस इट इज इक्वल टू डी है ना बिकॉज़ व्हाट हैपेंस इज दिस टू लाइंस दे बिकम ऑलमोस्ट वर्टिकल ना यस ओके सो दिस डी शुड बी इक्वल टू हाउ मच इट शुड बी इक्वल टू लैम्डा ना यस बिकॉज़ फर्स्ट मैक्सिम It should be equal to lambda. Sir, I mean, lambda two two be there. Huh? Lambda two be answer. The B and C option. No, nee, so one one is this. This is like the minimum. अभी lambda से ज़्यादा होगा तो क्या होगा? इसके बाद एक minimum एक darkness 
I mean, suppose this is not happening at infinity, it's happening before infinity. Then when you cross this point, the part difference increases. Yes. Okay. But if it becomes 2 lambda, okay, then what will happen? We will see the second maxima also. Yes. Okay. So then what will happen? We will see a central maxima. We will see another bright fringe. And we will see the light again at infinity. We will see again the light increasing to brightness. But will we see the bright fringe at infinity? No, no. But suppose it is like 3 lambda or something. Then we will see the second bright fringe before you go into infinity. Yes. Okay. So that is what we don't want, no? Okay. So that is why the correct answer is less than or equal to 2 lambda. Okay. Understood, better. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I'm coming back to uh, some more questions from Arman and Dhruv. So there's one more doubt. What about A option? Hmm. A option kya beta usme? Lambda diya sir. Wo correct hoga na? So isme answer mein se B or C diya. Mera lambda by two diya. Hmm. Or if... Correct kyun nahi hoga? Dekho, because A lambda hai na. So that means you are seeing only half the fringe now because it is infinity. Pe hai. Okay. You don't want the first maxima to be at infinity, you want it to be before infinity. Yes. So the correct option A, A and C. Chahi, correct option should be anything which is greater than lambda but less than 2 lambda. Okay. Okay. Just a moment, I'm sharing a question next. Okay, so this is from Arman's set of questions. It's a logical question based on gravitational field and potential. Just go through it. All of you, you can see the question, right? Okay, so question 17.22 over here. It says V and E denote the gravitational potential and field respectively at a point due to certain uniform mass distribution described in four different situations. Assume the potential at infinity to be zero. Then the value of E and V given in column to match which one, okay? So Arman has asked for the D option. At the center of the line, line joining two point masses of equal magnitude, okay? What can we say about field and potential? So just try this out, people. So what I would suggest is you make a diagram okay, with this thing two particles of equal mass and consider the point which is at the midpoint of the two. Okay. So what we can see is about gravitational field at that point. It will be zero. So the field vectors will be cancelling. But what about potential? It will be a negative quantity. Arman, are you online with us? Yes, sir. So, what, what is uh, difficult in this D part? Midpoint field to zero, jayega, no?
do equal point masses are there so field will become zero and what about potential can be negative देखो ना हाउ अरे पोटेंशियल का फॉर्मूला है ना बेटा सपोज दैट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द पॉइंट मासेस इज एल सो ईच पॉइंट मासेस इज एट एल बाय 2 ना सो माइनस जीएम अपॉन एल बाय 2 प्लस ऑफ माइनस जीएम अपॉन एल बाय 2 ना सो ईच ईच पार्टिकल इज क्रिएटिंग अ नेगेटिव पोटेंशियल ना सो यू आर एट अ फाइनाइट डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम इट हां हां वो टू नेगेटिव क्वांटिटीज कांट बी जीरो ना बेटा But field कैसा है quantity है field vector है so the vector of the two will be zero ना okay so understood the answer ना yes okay then let's do this one next satellite revolves around a planet in circular orbit of radius r much larger than the radius of the planet which at with a time period equal to capital T if the satellite is stopped and then released in its orbit okay so to find the time taken by to fall to the center of the to the surface of the planet okay so isme kya karna hai apne ko acceleration ko integrate karna hai aur rather velocity ko integrate karna hai so you can use work energy to find velocity as a function of the distance no you are following the question arman yes sir it is at a certain height h na above the planet and that height h is very large compared to the radius so gravitational field will not be uniform so as it is falling you have to calculate the variable acceleration na or the variable speed ये प्लैनेट है और इसके अबाउट वी आर रिवॉल्विंग इन अ सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट radius of the planet is let's say small r so capital r is small r plus h okay and the time period of the circular orbit is t so this time period is how much it is 2 pi r by v and orbital speed you know is square root of given by r by r to the power 3 by 2 by root g is the standard formula this is the relation between time period the mass of the planet and the radius of the orbit okay so this is let's say our first equation now if this particle was stopped at some point of time during its orbit so from that Point where it stops, it will go into a free fall kind of situation. So it will start from here at u equal to zero. It will have a speed v. Okay. So if at some point of time its height from the center of the, I mean from the surface is x. Okay. So what does that mean? We can calculate this half m d square. 
from the change in this thing, the potential energy. So it will be plus minus GMM upon R plus X minus of small r plus x. Okay, is clear. Yes, sir. So your V is square root of GMM into square root of one upon R plus X minus one by R like this. So small and simple. This expression is not correct. So this V is your minus dx by dt. So minus dx by dt is some constant into 1 upon r plus x minus some constant to the power half. This thing. Okay. So now we will read this. So minus dx upon this quantity, square root of 1 upon r plus x minus 1 by capital R is equal to alpha dt integrated from this from t equal to 0 to t equal to some time as x is going from r minus r to 0 and this r minus r you take as approximately capital R because it is given to us that small r is very small compared to that. He understood better. Everyone is clear? Yes, sir. Yeh integration pata hai na kaise karenge? That square root of r plus x is coming in the numerator, so it is that upon, you know, kaise karenge? Substitution karenge. Yeah, it is a bit of a lengthy integration that we get. Okay. So, in this now you will get this time in terms of this alpha and, you know, and that alpha is in terms of square root 2 gm and there will also be a capital R term. And finally, you will eliminate and get it in terms of capital T because this is the relation between square root GM, capital R and T. You understanding? Yes. So, the square root GM wala term hai, usko main wahan pe replace kar dunga with what? 2 pi R to the power 3 by 2 divided by capital T. That's how I'll get the answer in terms of capital T. Okay. Yes. So there's a bit of working involved in this, but you can complete it. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So next, I'm moving on to another question. Just give me a moment. I'll share. Okay, so this is an interesting question which has to do with time varying magnetic field. Okay, so just go through this and I'll explain what to do in this.
रेड थ्रू द क्वेश्चन पीपल इसमें देखो क्या हो रहा है द वर्टिकल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दैट इज के आर टी r is the distance from the center of from the axis like that so that magnetic field is changing with time so it is generating circular electric field lines okay so you will calculate the circular electric field lines by using faraday's law that you take a circular ring okay imaginary circular ring of radius r you know and draw an imaginary loop like that so for that loop you apply faraday's law so you will get the induced emf in that loop and induced emf ke terms mein you will get the electric field so you will get the electric field as circular rings or electric field lines will be circular rings uh, which will be some kind of function of r so once you got that now you know the electric field as a function of r at a radial distance r from the axis so now you have to think in terms of current electricity and use the formula that current density j is equal to sigma e and that e is a function of r now so at a distance r from the axis you you will know the current density which is going through that ring so integrate that current density over the thickness of the ring and you will get the total current understood what i am saying people yes sir okay. yes sir this is a good question so try it out सर हेलो
okay people so let's look at the working in the question so kya ho raha hai this region where at a distance r the magnetic field varies as a function of r according to this formula b is equal to proportional to r n time k r into t where k is a constant okay so suppose this is my uh, suppose this is my y axis x axis and z axis is coming out of the plane so now if i look at the diagram in the x z plane I'm seeing my magnetic field lines coming out. The D is K R T, where R is the distance from this y-axis, so it is root of x square plus z square. Okay. So now, if I consider an imaginary circular loop like this. This is anti-clockwise. Okay, of radius some capital R. Let's see. So, is my flux? How much will be? The flux will be integration of d d. And to consider that, we'll have to take area element as a ring. Radius minus d r. It will be d, which is k r t, into area of such a ring, which is two pi r d r, integrated from r equal to zero to r equal to capital R. So magnetic flux, you can see, will be k into two pi into t. Into r square dr का integration, so that will become r cube by three. Sir, sir, is in this question तो जो flux आएगा, वो जो inner part है उसमें भी आएगा, या only a to b आएगा? No, you are we are considering basically a ring of radius capital M, है ना? No, sir, I understood जैसे कि जैसे उसकी तो टाइप ऑफ एक थिकनेस वाली रिंग होगी तो जो बीच में हॉलो पार्ट है उसमें भी फ्लक्स आएगा क्या क्योंकि हम जीरो से आठ तक कर रहे हैं ना इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एट डिस्टेंस कैपिटल आर देन वी सी हाउ दो इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन जो ओवरलैपिंग विद योर एक्चुअल मेटेलिक रिंग ओके ओके यस सर यस सर तो अभी देखो नेक्स्ट में क्या बोलूंगा ये इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड अगर ऐसा है तो ई डॉट डी एस ओवर क्लोज लूप शुड बी इक्वल टू वॉट माइनस डी फाइव बी बाई डी नाउ फॉर अर्कुलर लूप ऑफ रेडियस आर इंड्यूस टी एम एफ विच इज इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ ई डॉट डी एस ओवर दैट क्लोज लूप So that should become minus d phi v by d. Okay, and I have taken the closed loop anti-clockwise, so I'll get the electric field with negative sign means it will be clockwise. So this will tell me that electric field into two pi capital R will become minus of two pi by three. K into R cube as I wrote. So electric field is minus of K by three R square. So minus sign is showing that it is a clockwise electric field. Clear now, Vidya Guru? Yes, sir. So now you you go back to actual metallic ring. So actual metallic ring is 
like this. Like this. So this thickness is some D over there, okay. And inner radius and outer radius B. So usme aise electric field lines ja hai. So for that ring now, if you consider a point which is at a distance small r, the electric field at that point is like this. So the electric field is like this clockwise. So the current through that ring will be equal to integration of j d a. So that is nothing but sigma e d a. Okay. So us may be we'll have to take like if this is the cross section of the wire uh, of, of this thing. Yeah? So this is the inner radius A, this is the outer radius B, and this thickness is D. So here electric field lines are coming out of it. Okay. So at a distance, at an arbitrary distance R from the axis, we have to take a vertical strip like this of thickness dr. And that will become my area. This is the axis of the okay. The magnetic field lines are like this. So this will become electric field was that uh, K R cube. So in this case, it will be small r. Oh, car square thumb, my mistake. Because there was one hour got cancelled. It was going about the electric field as a function of distance in this a by 3 r square. So here it will become small r. So that is sigma into e into dA. Now dA will be how much? It will be that uh, thickness d into dr. So this is your dA. This is integrated from r equal to a to r equal to b. So it will be conductivity into k by 3 into small d into r square dr so that will become r cube by 3 so this will become d cube minus a cube by 3 e aapka electric current ho jaya. where rho you can write as 1 upon i mean sigma you can write as 1 upon resistivity Okay, in fact that height is H instead of D. So just replace my D with H. Sir, sigma kya hai pe? Sigma is one upon resistivity, na? electrical conductivity. Okay. That Ohm's law ka ye jo, ye jo form hai na? J is equal to sigma E. Okay. So V is equal to IR. So R becomes rho L by E or L upon sigma E. ठीक है, so hope this question is clear. Yes, sir. So you will get that factor of one by nine when you take the two by five. I think alpha will be that only, no? Alpha will be nine. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll switch on, switch over to another question next. Just give me a moment. Okay, so this is a somewhat more formula based question. Just go through it, I'll explain.
Okay, so basically what we have to do in this, we have to understand the gravitational field at a point inside the tunnel, which is that circular tunnel like that. So inside a solid mass like this, solid spherical mass, gravitational field is very cut as a linear function of distance from the center. Now it is that formula gm by 2r cube, sorry, gm by r cube into small r, capital R cube into small r. So that formula we have to use. Okay. And then we have to use this concept that if the normal reaction is double the gravitational force, then what is the speed? So, and if the contact force is zero, then time period and all this. Okay. So let's quickly work this out. So inside a solid spherical mass of uniform density, you do the tunnel. Of radius some r, then yahan pe jo gravitational field hai, wo kitna ho jaye? If this is capital M and radius R, capital R, then this field is gm by R cube into small r. Right, this is clear, Dhruv? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, given to us that R into capital R by 2, so gravitational field inside the tunnel is gm by 2r square okay and acceleration due to gravity at the surface is small g so small g is gm by r square so gravitational field inside the tunnel is g by 2 so now it's easy no? so if you have any particle which is labeled as c over here going with a speed v inside the tunnel now suppose you no know, it is in contact with the outer surface, for example. So the, the contact force N is like this. The gravitational force Me is like this. And the centrifugal force. So N plus Me should be equal to Mv square by R by small r. This is the formula you have to use better. Understood? Or if normal reaction is the opposite way, you will just get this as a negative quantity because mv square by r, because me will be greater than this. So assuming the normal reaction is inwards, it is like this. It is mv square upon r, which is capital R by 2, minus me. Or it is 2mv square by r minus mg by 2, because you substitute this over here. Okay. So, depends. If your V is small enough that this term dominates, I mean mg by 2 dominates, then the normal reaction could be outwards also. Your normal reaction could be 0 also. And from this you will get the value V according to whatever that contact force is. And once you've got this, you will know that the time period is 2 pi r by V. Or 2 pi capital R by 2 divided by V. Okay, Dhruv, so is, is the method clear for solving? Yes, sir, understood. Okay. All right, so let me move on to the next question.
so let's go through this question non conducting disk having a uniform positive charge q is rotating about its axis with uniform angular velocity omega find the magnetic field at the center of the disk usko kaise karenge we will integrate rings kritika is your question beta okay so we will integrate rings and find the magnetic field due to each small ring now so if you take a ring of radius small r and thickness dr usme agar charge dq hai so we can treat that charge getting like a small current a circular current so at the center of a circular current magnetic field is how much mu not i divided by 2r okay yeah okay so just integrate for these rings we get that this is so
फ्री है क्या ओके पीपल लेट्स वर्क आउट द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो इज इट डी आई विल जस्ट चेक बेटा so a and d straight forward okay so this is rotating like this total charge q radius r so we will slice a ring like this of radius small r and thickness dr to ring ka charge kitna ho jayega Be sigma into area, so that is Q upon pi r square into two pi r dr. So Q by r square r dr. That is the charge on the ring. So that will act like a current, which is dQ upon time period, which is Q r dr upon r square. Oh, sorry, two times. On R squared divided by two pi by omega, so this will become Q R P R omega upon pi times capital R square. ये मेरा करंट हो जाएगा, so or you can say differential current हो जाएगा, so it will create a differential field which is mu not Di by two times r, so that is mu not by two into omega q. R will cancel upon pi r square. All right, this is clear so far. Yes, sir. Okay, so the net magnetic field we just integrate. So. U not omega q by two times pi r square d r integrated from r equal to zero to r equal to capital R. So this should become u not by two pi q omega by r. Sir, what will be the direction? I'm sorry. Inward or outward direction? पॉजिटिव चार्ज है वो एंटी क्लॉक वाइज रोटेट कर रहा है ना बेटा इफ इट्स पॉजिटिव चार्ज रोटेटिंग एंटी क्लॉक वाइज देन मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द प्लेन सेंस ऑफ करंट विल बी लाइक ओके सो इज दिस क्लियर बेटा यस फिनिश विद दिस यू नीड टू नोट डाउन ओके जस्ट नोट दिस डाउन So, Kritika, done with noting now? Yes, sir. So, next question is based on. Uh, let me just share it with you, just over. So, this is now a question based on uh, Doppler's effect. Okay. Just go through this. We'll discuss.
so understood the question train is moving with constant speed along a circular track if the length of the train is 1/4 the length of the circular track okay. then frequency by passenger sitting in the middle of the train frequency the passenger was sitting for all three part so one part we have to find for the rear also okay. and the length of the train is 1/4 of the circular track This is your circular track itself. The train which is occupying one fourth of it. You like this lesson? So if this train is going with angular speed omega like this, so the sound source is the engine. Let us say this is the source, and this is one observer E, and this is another observer B. Okay. So, kya hoga? Source ke respect mein, so source's velocity will be like this. So, this will be. R omega like this. Okay, this is and E's velocity will also be R omega. Okay, and B's velocity will also be R omega. And E is the midpoint, so this angle will be pi by four. So now, if you just compare the points A and S, so A e and S are two points which are lying like this. Forty-five degrees. So these two are some theta. This is also R omega. Okay. This is a pointing. So frequency heard by E will be how much? V plus V O. So that will become R omega sine theta okay. upon V minus V S. So that will become minus of R omega sine theta. So it will be equal to f. You understand it because E angle be ninety minus theta. 
और ये एंगल भी कैसा है नाइनटी माइनस थ्री टाइम एंड सेम काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन यू सी फॉर द अदर ऑब्जर्वर बी ऑल्सो सो कृतिका दिस इज क्लियर So it actually remains equal to the original frequency of the engine. Yes, Kritika, is the concept clear? They run the wavelength. Yeah. Uh, sure, uh, Dhruv, you can leave if you're done with your doubts. No problem. I have completed all your doubts. Yeah, sir, uh, I just had one doubt that in this question, like uh, these types of question, like when they ask us to compare wavelengths, uh, then uh, do we derive it, uh, like derive type of uh, using Doppler? Wavelength, uh, it would be the uh, velocity of sound as heard by the observer. Divided by the frequency, again as heard by the observer. Okay. So, for example, if the observer is some other medium, he is listening to water. The sound is coming from air. So, this V of sound you will substitute here. Watching sound under water, not the velocity of sound in air. Okay. Actually, that means just like source is in water and uh, observer is in air. Then I will uh, substitute with sound. Observer, uh, no sound. Just read here. It is just sound in air. Okay, fine. You see, we are compression and refraction. We are traveling in that medium, no, where the observer is present. So in that medium, they are traveling with what speed? Whatever speed it has. No, yes, sir. Particular medium in which the observer is there. Okay, sir. Impression. No, so therefore the wavelength will become accordingly. Did you get it understood? Okay. Sir, 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 sir. The velocity of the sound with respect to the observer will be v sound plus r omega sine theta. No, minus. उनको source क्या कर रहे हैं? Separate कर रहे हैं ना बेटा? So V minus V S में V S का value क्या होगा negative होगा ना okay that's right in any case you can see the orientation between the source and observer is not changing ना there is no relative motion between them okay so that is why there is no Doppler shift this is just a way of proving it but ultimately that is a concept sir then the wavelength will remain constant yes The wavelength will also remain constant. Okay. Now I just share another question. Okay, so let's go through this uh, paragraph. Changing from circular to elliptical orbit, okay? So just read through the paragraph, then you understand.
नाटक चल रहा है कि so as your orbital motion is changing from circular orbit of radius r to elliptical orbit of semi major axis e you know your energy is changing from the value written on top to the value written below okay. now let's look at the questions yeah so the questions are these Arman, are these the questions? Seventeen point one eight one nine. These are the ones. Yes, sir. Okay, so some data is missing here. How may it be? Why is it like that? Because I don't understand how to get out of it. Initial energy is minus g naught, so that is equal to your minus g m by two small r. Minus g m m divided by two times small r. Okay. Now after firing the rocket. It will become minus g m m by two a, where a is larger than r. No, so that you can understand, but no other value is given, no. Oh, well, so total energy is conserved, no. No, better. Why do point it? No, the energy. If you read the paragraph, the energy is changing because the rocket engine gets fired, no. Okay. So there is chemical potential energy into mechanical energy. Okay. So I think there is some data missing from which you will be able to. I think ratio of A and R must be given or something like that. Oh, uh, wait! I I also thought that thing. I could solve it. Yeah, I can solve it. So you will be able to calculate the new energy, and then from the new energy, you will be able to calculate the semi-major axis and all that. Okay. Okay. And uh, maximum height of the spacecraft will become the the height at the perihelion point. Okay. Your nearest point will be your original R. So nearest point plus furthest point, कितना हो जाएगा? Two A हो जाएगा. Twice of the semi-major axis. I mean the semi-major axis, the major axis itself. Okay. That's important. So there is some data missing in the question. Otherwise, you can work it out from that concept. You have to just use that formula. ठीक है. So I think Arman, your questions are clear now, right? Uh, sir, one, uh, one more, seventeen point four. Ah, uh, ye wala. Ah, okay. Let's discuss this. Okay. So satellite is seen after eight hours over the equator at a point on the Earth when its sense of rotation is opposite to the Earth. The time interval after which it can be seen at the same place when the sense of rotation. Ah, uh, so is me kya na? It's like relative angular speed. So what is happening when they are going in opposite direction, Earth and the satellite? So the relative angular velocity becomes what? Omega one plus omega two. When they are going in opposite directions. Huh. Huh. So the suppose yeah. Earth is rotating clockwise and this one is anti-clockwise. So Earth के respect में उसका कैसे दिखेगा? Anti-clockwise of omega one plus omega two. Huh. So that is how much? That is two pi by eight hours. Whereas Earth's rotation, you know, is happening at two pi by twenty-four. Understood, sir. So from that, you can find the absolute angular speed of the satellite. Or same sense, me or aaga, then what will happen? Omega two minus omega one. Okay. Yes. So right one yes. equation omega one plus omega two is equal to two pi by eight, where omega two, which is the Earth's uh, angular speed, is two pi by twenty-four. Twenty-four. And omega one, and then when the sense of rotation is same, the relative angular speed will become omega one minus omega two. Yes. So that you write as two pi divided by the new time period with respect to it, and you will get the new time period. Yes. Clear, brother. So this is this question. So Arman, I think your doubts are cleared now, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. okay. I just continue with when Pritika's doubts. I can leave. Yeah, yeah, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay, all the best. कुछ और होगा तो भेज देना मुझे doubts ठीक है बाद में. Okay, so Pritika, we have uh, these questions remaining, right?
okay so res resistance of the copper wire is given as a function of the this thing temperature okay so it is connected to a battery of this much uh, so is the problem is coming with the error part or with the actual calculation part so the error part when we uh, take the lock term and okay so here what will happen is see the uh, the percentage error in the emf is how much 1% okay. 0.1 out of 10 you know so 1% okay now see what will happen your heat generated is proportional to square of emf okay yes. so jo delta q hai the heat generated that will have an error of how much 2% yes okay so now your uh, temperature is directly proportional to heat temperature yes you understand because q is equal to mc delta theta like that yes yes so temperature jo hum calculate karenge jo 25 degree c temperature bola hai usme actually kitna error hona chahiye usme 2% ka error hona chahiye and so accordingly jo bhi resistance mein calculate karunga usme 2% ka error hona chahiye वेट वेट उस अभी आर नॉट में भी एरर है है ना तो जो थीटा है जो टेम्परेचर है उसमें टू परसेंट का एरर है और आर नॉट हाँ आर नॉट जो कोफिशियंट है उसमें भी एरर है ना बेटा सो प्रोडक्ट है ना दोनों का आर नॉट इन टू इन्वॉल्विंग टेम्परेचर सो टोटल परसेंटेज एरर वैसे आ जाएगा ना टोटल एरर में एडिशन होगा ना बेटा बिकॉज इट्स अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ यू थिंग है ना सो टू परसेंट एरर इन द टेम्परेचर एंड दिस इज शोइंग यू हाउ मच पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट एरर वन बाई फोर ना मतलब कोफिशिएंट में भी एक एरर है ना हां सो दैट आल्सो यू हैव टू कंसीडर ना दैट्स व्हाई दैट विल गेट एडेड सो 0.01 आउट ऑफ 4 इज अ 0.25% एरर यस ओके सो लाइक दैट यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट ओके नेक्स्ट सर इसमें केस वन के लोग सॉल्व कर लिया था वो जो सेकंड डायग्राम है उसके लिए नहीं सॉल्व कर रहा था ओके जस्ट अ सेकंड सो मॉडल ऑफ सीओ टू मॉलिक्यूल्स इज मेड विद द टू स्फीयर्स हाँ व्हाट बी यू सिंग बेटा कौन सा केस करना है अपने वो जो नीचे वाला केस है ना जिसमें कार्बन मॉलिक्यूल भी रहा है उसके ओके सर इसमें चारों करेक्टर मल्टीपल टाइप है Vibrate freely in two ways shown by the arrow. In case one, the angular frequency is this much, and in case one, the carbon atom always remains at rest. <coughs> But it's not necessary, na? No? Case one, me it remains at rest always because it's only if the speed of the two oxygen molecules is same, then the carbon at atom will remain at rest. Sir, but if you uh, view from the chemical, momentum will remain conserved, na, of the molecule. So, yes. from, just from the direction of the arrows, how can we say the momentum of the system is zero? Following my point. Sir, since uh, 
दोनों एटम ऑक्सीजन के तो वेलोसिटी भी मतलब सेम ही होगा ना अगर आप कार्बन मॉलिक्यूल में दैट देन दैट फाइन इफ यू अज्यूम दैट देन ऑप्शन 1 एंड 2 इज करेक्ट बट दैट इज नॉट गिवन ना यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके ऐसा मतलब ऐसा भी तो हो सकता है ना दे आर एट दैट इंस्टेंट दे आर हैविंग डिफरेंट वेलोसिटीज बट एट दैट इंस्टेंट द कार्बन एटम इज एट रेस्ट ओके दैट इज एट अ डिफरेंट इंस्टेंट द कार्बन एटम मे हैव अ वेलोसिटी ना ओके ठीक है इज इट क्लियर देन सर व्हाट अबाउट द सेकंड केस हां अभी सेकंड केस में भी इट्स मतलब ऑल थ्री आर मूविंग ना सो इन जनरल वी हैव टू अज्यूम दैट द सिस्टम हैज सम मोमेंटम Yes. Okay. ठीक है, so is it clear, beta? So no, actually, I was not able to calculate the um, time, the frequency, and the fourth part. Okay. So see, for time period of oscillation, you have to look at the oscillation of the two oxygen molecules with respect to the carbon atom. रिड्यूस मास वाला केस है ना बेटा सो टोटल मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज टू एम वन टोटल द टू स्प्रिंग्स आर इन पैरल ना सो यू कैन टेक इक्वेलेंट स्प्रिंग कांस्टेंट बिटवीन दम एस टू के राइट एंड इफ यू कंबाइन द टू स्प्रिंग्स इन टू वन इन पैरल दैट मीन्स एक साइड में क्या है दो ऑक्सीजन मॉलिक्यूल है सो उसका मास टू एम वन है और दूसरे साइड में एक कार्बन एटम है सो उसका मास एम टू है तो रिड्यूस मास आ जाएगा यू नो द फॉर्मूला ऑफ रिड्यूस मास ना प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मास डिवाइडेड बाय द सम ऑफ द मास यस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ रिड्यूस मास एंड द इक्वेलेंट स्प्रिंग कॉन्स्टेंट इज टू के ना सो टाइम पीरियड विल कम फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द Uh, square root of, I mean, omega equivalent will be square root of equivalent k divided by reduced mass. Okay. Okay, so, so that's how you. So, so uh, which are the options to be correct? I think three and four should be correct. No, just check the reduced mass formula. Okay, three and four. Uh-huh. Sir, reduced mass me. अगर जो spring constant two k है तो वहाँ पे के अंदर एक टू का फैक्टर नहीं बट ये भी तो है ना इक्वेलेंट स्प्रिंग कांस्टेंट भी तो टू के है ना हाँ सर उसके लिए बोला हाँ सो इट इज टू के डिवाइडेड बाय रिड्यूस मास ना नाउ सब्सिट्यूट द फॉर्मूला ऑफ रिड्यूस मास ओके रिड्यूस मास में एक साइड में मास एम वन नहीं होगा बेटा टू एम वन होगा बिकॉज दो ऑक्सीजन Okay, so that is this question. Now, next one. So here, what is happening? So pipe is inclined like this. So Bernoulli's equation use करना है बेटा. Okay. हाँ सर वो तो मेरे को component में problem हो रहा है. Okay. So what we have to do? We have to find the speed v two, right? V1 is given to us as two meters per second. Diameters का ratio two is to one है, so areas का ratio four is to one होगा. हाँ. So area one fourth हो जा रहा है, तो speed four times हो जाएगा. तो V2 कितना होगा? Eight meters per second. Continuity equation. Understood ना बेटा? रोजी So you know the pressure difference, you know the kinetic head. So from that you will get the gravity head. Sir, so, uh, 
तो इसमें जो हाइट रहेगा वो एल बाय रूट टू हो जाएगा ना एल बाय रूट टू हो जाएगा ओके सर देन वेलोसिटी विल हैव अ कंपोनेंट और नॉट इन इन द हॉरिजॉन्टल वेलोसिटी इज इज द स्पीड ऑफ फ्लो ना बेटा दैट इज अलोंग दैट एक्सिस जो डॉटेड एक्सिस है ना तो उसके अलोंग ही है इन बर्नोलीज इक्वेशन काइनेटिक हेड इज नॉट अ वेक्टर क्वांटिटी ना बेटा काइनेटिक एनर्जी ओके करेक्ट ना मतलब इन फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स नाइदर इन कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन नॉर इन बर्नोलीज इक्वेशन वी आर नॉट यूजिंग वेक्टर्स एनीवेयर दे आर ऑल स्केलर क्वांटिटीज ओके है ना दैट्स व्हाई ठीक है ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जे बाय जूल्स एक्सपेरिमेंट टू वेट्स ऑफ 1 kg अलाउड टू फॉल थ्रू 1 मीटर when they fell 80 times the temperature of water in the calorimeter increases by this much okay so what do you write in this question beta tell me फॉलिंग थ्रू सो फ्री फॉल टाइम वन सेकेंड है Okay. Okay. And should be given to you, so it's not given. Just take it as ten. Okay. You know, so half p square. So we'll get the height is five meters. Height is uh, five meters. If you take g as ten, half is five meters. So, so how much is p square? How much? Free fall time is half p square. Half p square. No. मल्टीप्लाई करो गेटिंग टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी Oh, okay. If if they had been in free fall, they should have fallen through five meters. But inside the water, they are falling through only one meter, na, no, beta. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So from that you can calculate. Time is given as one second. So what is the rate of acceleration inside water? You can calculate that. So from that you will get the reaction force or the viscous force. Okay. Right, so apply work energy, na? So change in gravitational potential energy is equal to change in kinetic energy plus the heat dissipated. So one uh, meter कैसे आते थे? दिया हुआ है ना बेटा क्वेश्चन में. We are allowed to fall through one meter. Okay. 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 So had there been no viscous force, then one meter should have taken lot less time than one second, no? Yes. So that means there is viscous force present. Okay. Okay. So you will calculate the heat dissipated by viscous force using work energy theorem. Okay. Understood, beta? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, then prism-based question. 
सर उसने मेरे को वो थिन प्रिज्म का पर्पस नहीं समझ समझा कि बेंडिंग लाइट है ना बेटा रिमेंबर थिन प्रिज्म बेंड्स लाइट बाय हाउ मच म्यू माइनस वन इनटू ए द एंगल ऑफ द प्रिज्म ओके सो यू हैव द थिन प्रिज्म एंड अ थिन लेंस इमेज विल बी फॉर्म वेर On the optical uh, axis only, right? On yes, the principal sir. at thirty yes, centimeters because focal yes, length is fifty. Yes, sir. So thirty will form, hoga, okay? Yes. Abhi dekho, what will the prism do? It will bend the light in the clockwise direction by two okay. degrees. Okay. 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 So, जो आपका image है, वो object के respect में two degrees से clockwise rotate हो जाएगा. इमेज विल कम बिलो द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस ओके हाँ, it causes only angular deviation of light. Okay. Okay, na? Okay, Kritika. So we'll conclude the session, right? Yes. Yes. Any other doubts? You can send me in the week. Okay. Okay. Okay, brother. Thanks. That's it. Thank you.